Lately, hydrogen power has been gaining momentum, but critics say it's neither efficient nor really all that green. When you burn hydrogen, you generate energy in the form of heat, and the only byproduct is therefore water. This makes it a clean source of energy. However, it does require energy to make the hydrogen in the first place. Hydrogen is part of climate discussions, particularly going on in the US and in many Western countries right now, for its use in hard to decarbonize sectors like trucking, airplanes, and as a store of electricity. However, critics say that pursuing green hydrogen as a fuel source is not the best solution for combating climate change because it's inefficient and is often created with carbon emitting energy sources. Producing hydrogen takes energy because hydrogen atoms don't exist on their own. They are almost always stuck to another atom, often another element. On Earth, hydrogen is particularly abundant in the form of water or H2O. Creating pure hydrogen requires breaking those molecular bonds. In the energy business, people refer to hydrogen by an array of colors. This is shorthand for how it was actually created. One way of making hydrogen is a process called electrolysis. When electricity is passed through a substance to force a chemical change, in this case, splitting H2O into hydrogen and oxygen. Ultimately, there are two main forms of hydrogen that we're using today. In fact, there's three, but let's just focus on the two cleaner versions. The first of those is green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is a reference to when the energy used to power electrolysis comes from renewables sources like wind, water, or solar. Many countries are spending billions of dollars trying to put themselves in a position to be able to create enormous amounts of green hydrogen. On the other hand, we have blue hydrogen. And blue hydrogen is produced from natural gas with a process of steam methane reforming where natural gas is mixed with very hot steam and a catalyst. A chemical reaction occurs creating hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Water is added to that mixture, turning the carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and therefore more hydrogen. If the carbon dioxide emissions are then captured and stored underground, the process is considered carbon neutral and the resulting hydrogen is called blue hydrogen. But there's some controversy over blue hydrogen because natural gas production inevitably results in methane emissions from so-called fugitive leaks, which are leaks of methane from the drilling, extraction, and transportation process. Methane does not last in the atmosphere as long as carbon dioxide, but it is a much more potent greenhouse gas. It's actually much worse than the usual villain of carbon dioxide. Over 100 years, one ton of methane can be considered to be equivalent to 28 to 36 tons of carbon dioxide. Now, there are other forms of hydrogen, such as gray hydrogen, which is made from natural gas reforming, like blue hydrogen, but without any efforts to capture carbon dioxide byproducts. And that's currently the most common form of hydrogen on the planet. Then we also have pink hydrogen, yellow hydrogen, and turquoise hydrogen. However, what's most interesting right now is that a company called Eight Rivers in the United States says it has a revolutionary new form of creating blue hydrogen, which basically makes it green hydrogen. There is a brand new breakthrough technology, which is the cheapest method to produce blue hydrogen. In fact, it's able to capture 99% of the carbon that is created as a result of the creation of blue hydrogen. This new technology is actually pretty damn amazing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. Just want to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. By the way, thank you for your support this year. I really do sincerely appreciate it. And well, we're actually headed back to Australia. So I just sort of let everyone know we're headed back on the 19th, nighttime, flying out at eight o'clock. And we'll be back, be back in Australia, we'll be back in Melbourne for a little while, a couple of weeks, but it's going to be cold. We have a house, or our house, which we plan on selling actually soon, is actually on the top of Mount Dandenong. So it's on the top of a, uh, a hill or a mountain, depends on what your definition is. And it's the middle of winter right now, so it's going to be cold. So I don't know how long we'll be able to actually last there 
because Shanna does need to get sun as much as possible to try and um, help her with her cancer, of course. The more, the more exposure to UV light, I think it's really, really helpful. But I thought I'd just share with you that news. There's a breakthrough technology which will be the cheapest method to produce blue hydrogen with more than 99% CO2 capture. The scientist behind the alum cycle has invented a process that can apparently, they claim, or he claims, eliminate almost all emissions from making H2 from fossil gas. Kind of sounds too good to be true to me, but this is what they're saying. A new, cheaper, highly efficient process of producing hydrogen from fossil gas has been unveiled that is said to be able to capture more than 99% of CO2 emissions by recycling carbon dioxide within the technology. Sounds expensive. Is it? Can it actually work? Well, I'll get to that in just a second. But first, Eight Rivers, a company originally set up to commercialize its chief inventor, Rodney Allums, designed for zero emission gas power plants. Yep, zero emission gas power plants. Sounds like a um, pipe dream, but well, apparently Rodney says it's real has designed a similar approach to blue hydrogen production with its new 8RH2 technology. The alum cycle that he co-invented combusts natural gas with oxygen, producing a high-pressure supercritical CO2 stream that can be used to drive power generation within the system. While the small amount of CO2 that exits the cycle during each run can be easily captured owing to its pressure and its purity. Eight Rivers' 8RH2 process similarly uses and recycles CO2 in an oxy-fired combustor where oxygen is added and a CO2 convective reformer that takes the natural gas and hot carbon dioxide and steam from the combustor to form a syngas, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen that is later separated. So that's how it works. It sounds complicated, but actually it is relatively simple when you think about it. But commercializing the product is a different story. That's the hard part. The hot CO2 is extracted using a proprietary refrigeration-based CO2 separation system, according to the North Carolina company's website. Eight Rivers says its technology is cheaper and cleaner than traditional steam methane reforming or SMR approaches that also release all their carbon dioxide. So thus far at the moment, blue hydrogen isn't really working. It's not really selling worldwide. For example, Saudi Aramco are struggling to find buyers for their blue hydrogen. The reason being high costs. It's too expensive to manufacture. Therefore, it's too expensive for the end customer. So people aren't buying it. A Rivers explains that it has optimized thermal efficiency for improved conversion rates, minimal power requirements, and high CO2 capture rate at high concentration and pipeline pressure compared to other methods of producing H2 from gas, such as steam methane reforming and autothermal reforming, which is called ATR. In other words, they're saying basically the cost of blue hydrogen will come down significantly with their technology, making it commercially viable. Most blue hydrogen carbon capture technology target capture rates in the range of 90 to 96%, depending on the hydrogen production method, with ATR considered best in class for producing concentrated high pressure CO2 streams that can be easily separated from H2. It is harder to capture carbon dioxide from the more efficient SMR process because while 80% of the CO2 can be easily captured from the process stream, the remaining 40% is contained in flue gas, which comes out under low pressure at high temperature, and it contains other gases, such as oxygen, making it CO2 difficult to capture without further expensive, energy-demanding post-combustion processes. A Rivers tells Hydrogen Insight that in addition to confirming its 99% carbon capture rate, the 8RH2 process also has an overall efficiency of more than 80% in terms of the potential gas to hydrogen ratio compared to around 65 to 75% for SMR, meaning it's much more efficient at producing the hydrogen itself, meaning it should in theory cost significantly less. The company is now progressing design for a pilot commercial scale plant with a site expected to be chosen by the end of this year, and it won a $100 million investment from South Korea's SK Group in March. So SK, SK Innovation, 
They're the company making batteries with Ford in their joint venture in the US. Clearly, SK Innovation don't want to just stick to batteries. They want to get into blue hydrogen or hydrogen itself. They clearly see a future for it. And keep in mind as well, South Korean government has really heavily pursued hydrogen, which is the reason why South Korean car companies have made hydrogen powered cars, which to be honest, haven't taken off. They're quite unpopular. They don't really sell. The alum cycle technology has already been validated for gas-fired power production at a 50 megawatt test facility in Laporte, Texas, which was commissioned in 2018 by a company called NetPower that is co-owned by Eight Rivers, Utility, Constellation Energy, Occidental Petroleum, and energy services company Baker Hughes. You kind of see the, a trend going on there, right? Oil, pretty much all fossil companies of some sort, in some way. So yeah, fossil fuel companies are hoping that their next fossil fuel will be hydrogen. In this case, blue hydrogen. So what does all this mean? Well, ultimately this company in the US called Eight Rivers has developed this new process. They're saying it utilizes CO2 in a more efficient and cleaner way compared to traditional methods. Essentially, it's a more affordable way to produce blue hydrogen, which has a lower cost and a higher efficiency. Does this mean blue hydrogen could become commercially viable? It does. It could. But keep in mind, this is still a very complicated and technology-laden process. A lot of investment needs to go into making this product actually commercially viable. Right now, blue hydrogen isn't really commercially viable. I don't think this changes the game enough to compete against its, well, direct rival, which is what? renewable energy. Renewables are coming down in price at a faster rate. They're much simpler. And I think they're probably a better solution for a number of reasons. But I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.